you had a post on the Strata site recently that looked at tax fraud. Can you explain how online tax filing can actually facilitate fraud? Sure. So the, uh, the key thing about online filing is it makes it really easy to, uh, to file both fraudulent returns and to file them in vast quantities. So not only do the fed does the federal government have relatively um, simple ways to verify that you are who you say you are, but they make it really easy for you to use uh, stolen identities to file a bunch of returns in volume and at high speed. There's a good example. In Tampa, they had um, all of the, the, the drug dealers had disappeared off the street, and local law enforcement were concerned about, well, what happened to them? And they eventually found a whole bunch of, of drug dealers and, and drug addicts Looking, sitting in one of the high-end hotels, filing e-filing returns in high volumes um, over Wi-Fi, um, and that's what makes it so easy. Is is what you've got to look at is where are your points of compromise, hospitals, schools, all sorts of places where you give your identity details in. E-filing is making it easy for them to steal identities en masse and then leverage those to file the tax returns as fast as they can. Is there, anything, well, is there anything that an individual can do to protect against that? Uh, absolutely. The first thing is file early. The, the sooner you can limit the window of opportunity for people to, to file your tax return on your behalf, the better. Uh, publish the best version of yourself in data. Uh, going forward, more and more, the federal government and other entities will turn to companies like LexisNexis. And what they'll do is they'll ask us to verify that this person is who they say they are. And it's really building a big lie detector to say, you told us about your name and your address. Um, does this name and address location make sense to you? Mm -hmm. is based on what you know about um, identities and the long history of data that we've got on every identity, uh, does this match up with what, yeah, what they're saying? And really, it's a big lie detector. It's create a bunch of variables that contrast what um, you self-reported against what we actually know and give the federal government a way to figure out where people are lying and cheating. So expanding this a little bit, you've got a session here at Strata about large-scale identity fraud. What's involved in that type of fraud, and, and how does it differ from like regular identity fraud? So it just really comes down to the amount of money you want to get away with. It is, if you want to scale it out, if you're going to do it, you either do it big and go home, um, rather than the other way around, is, is um, you either do it big or go home. Um, you will really want to do, do it big and go home and disappear into the woodwork before anybody can figure out who you are. So to be able to do that and to do it on a scale that is um, large enough to make it worth your while, uh, you have to stop doing it in isolation. So you need to stop doing, trying to, so it's not about stealing, it's not about cheating on your tax return, it's about cheating on somebody else's tax return. And being, that allows you to be anonymous and to do it in scale. And the moment you scale your operation out, uh, you can make vast amounts of money. Uh, so what you have to do is find a way to cultivate identity, so you're either stealing them or cultivating them yourselves, and then find a way to use your own social network, all your friends and family, to distribute it geographically all over the countryside um, so that you can avoid detection. So you, that way you can steal more and more money and, and minimize the risk of being caught. Wow. So last question for you. Yeah. Is there, and I'm looking for a sliver of hope amidst all of this, but is there an identity fraud tell, something that thieves tend to overlook? So for, for there is um, a certain tell for self-reported data is if you know that the data is going to be looked at um, on the surface because you're allowed to report your own data, as long as you have a valid identity, so valid name, valid social security number, um, for different federal programs, you, that's easy to, to get past the checks and balances that they have. Uh, what you want to do is represent that data as if it looks completely legit on the surface. So if they're looking at an address where they have um, 500 re refund requests coming in from, all you need to do is to add apartment numbers to that and you can make it look like a high-rise um, building. Um, instead of it, really, it's a single-family dwelling. Mm -hmm. So there are a couple of tells we use. We look at the address, we say, is it a, a single-family dwelling? And you've put 500 people on it. Um, <laughs> is it there? We go. We go far beyond that. We take. It. We take the social our social graph, and what we do is we look at. Um, you said there were five Smiths living at that address. You made you you made the address look like it was a family of Smiths living together, but if we know who each one of those Smiths are, have they ever lived together in the past? Mm. Are they actually in real life part of the same social group? We, and that's not a social media social group. That's our own inter internal social group. Then that's one of those variables we add that can say. 
Um, they're not who they say they are, but it goes really down to a granular level. Um, when it comes to synthetic identity, which is, which is something that financial services companies really battle with, um, those are cultivated over time. That takes serious organized crime and serious um, organization to cultivate it over time and make it look like a real person that, um, that has utilities and moves from time to time and does certain things. For those types of identity theft, or it's not really identity theft, it, it is for that type of identity fraud, um, we're starting to study what is normal for different types of identities and then try and figure out where they deviate from whatever we would believe the, the norm should be. Um, and the one thing that we found is that synthetic identities don't make friends the way that other, like normal people, make friends um, in real life, in our data. So we look at our data and we look at how people connect over time, and synthetic identities connect in a very specific way, and we use that to figure out over time, the more that synthetic identity evolves, the easier it is for us to detect that it's a synthetic identity. Interesting. Well, it doesn't socially behave normally. Sure, sure. Th thank you so much for being with us. It's, a, it. it's a pleasure. Thank you for, for inviting me.